Hello, my name is Jeff Smith, Product Manager for Oracle SQL Developer, and today I wanted to spend just a few minutes to show how I work with PL SQL, or how I pretend to work with PL SQL since I'm not a core PL SQL um, professional. But I want to start with a, a brand new installation of SQL Developer version 4, and what I do to set up the coding environment and then some basic PL SQL navigational stuff. So let's get into it. First I'll add my connection. Now you can name your connections anything you want. I usually just go with the username and maybe a um, instance name next to it. You can save passwords if you want. If you don't want to, obviously do not. I like to use the connection callers. That was introduced as a new feature in version 4.0. And I tend to bypass the um, TNS names and um, more advanced authentication methods and just go directly into the database because I know where the server and the port and what the service names are. If I had seven or eight more connections to define, I would just use this as a starting point, change them up as needed, and hit the save button. And as long as I give it a new name, it won't overwrite the existing. But once I'm ready to go in, I just hit the connect button. I'm now in, and my connection is established, and I have a SQL worksheet. And I can see that green coloration around that window, because it belongs to that connection we just defined. But we're going to work with PL SQL, so I already have a, a package or two I want to experiment with, and these packages are in my local schema, so they're just right here under the um, main area of the connection tree. If I wanted to go work in a package in a different schema, I would need to come down here to other users, expand that, and continue to expand until I've got to the object. So if you don't see the code you're looking for up here, it's probably because you're not logged in as the right user. So I just opened up a uh, package spec. So at this point I'm going to go make a few changes to my preferences. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is right click in the gutter space and say give me line numbers. And the next thing I'm going to do is come into preferences on the code editor page and change my font. I like the fonts um, from Google, Droid Sans. You can use whatever fonts available on your system. Okay, so for me that's a little bit easier to read. So, um, the next thing I like to do is, in case I want to browse around to different objects while I'm working on this package, instead of using the space here underneath the object in the tree as a navigational shortcut like this which works just fine instead what I want to do is in the editor right click and ask for quick outline which gives me a secondary tree specific to just this object, so now I can use this to navigate from thing to thing. This is a pretty simple package, so it just has the three members and then all of them functions. Now what I would like to do is go jump down into the body um, of Git Top Teams and, and make a change to that, or maybe even execute it. So what I could do is expand this in the tree and go to it this way, but that's more clicking in the tree and I don't want to have to do that. So what I can do instead is click on this arrow, which will automatically open the body and take me to that invocation. And here now I have the body navigator. So I could just completely hide the connection tree now that I have everything open that I need. Let's um, execute get top teams. So I'm going to hit the play button. This is a package, so again, I have the three things I can execute. I'm going to execute get top teams. 
and this allows me to input values for the parameters. So it's asking for a number. I want to say 2006. Click on it, and once I've done that, you can see where it's gone down here in the anonymous block and added that for me. I could come in here and change anything that I want. I need this code. So when I click OK, it's going to execute this code for me. When it's done executing, down below I have this pop-up box, output variables, that when I click, since this program returned a sysref cursor, here is that said sysref cursor. So here's a list of teams from 2006, and they're ranked by total points scored. 2006 just happens to be that the Carolina Hurricanes won the Stanley Cup and they had 11 more points than Ottawa. Now if this had returned anything else, those additional variables and their values would be available here by clicking on them, which would take, take me to the appropriate uh, static or cursor over here to go investigate. Now, maybe I'm a little curious how this program works. I'm not familiar with, with this object. You know, is that a table? Is that a view? If I take my mouse cursor and click over Hockey Stats and then double click, it opens for me the Hockey Stats object, which in this case happens to be a table. So I can go browse the data now. So this is using the same font as I had selected in the preferences for the editor. Maybe I want to go look at that 2006 data so I can say year equal to 2006. That requires the data just for that. I could also say and team equals. So here are just those players. And if I wanted to send this out to Excel and you know some points just to make sure that my SQL's right, I could do that. And this grid's a little um hard to read because all the values just kind of run into each other. So another preference I like to set under database worksheet, I like to turn on grid and checkerboard. So now there's a little bit more uh, delineation um, of each row and each column. I just find that a little bit easier to read. And here I am back in the code. Now, if you don't like the code outline and you don't like the control clicks, if you're used to using the connection navigator, as you go into here and start clicking on things, either on purpose or accidentally, we automatically open those. And the other thing I would recommend you do is also to go into preferences and turn that behavior off because you don't want you to accidentally click on something. So under database, Object Viewer. If you turn off Open Object on Single Click, if I'm back here in my package body, and maybe what I just want to do is add um, something to this select list. I can click on anything I want over here without it actually opening that object now. So maybe I also want. Um, A for assist, so that's not, let's do this one plus minus. And I'd say insert the object name, please. Now I have that as well. And it's giving me a little bit of suggestion on this because I'm asking for uh, a sum of points and it's going to need to group by this as well. And if I click on that, it'll automatically change that code for me. But I'm going to undo this. And I did say this was going to be a quick video, and we're already at 10 minutes. So I'm going to stop there. So um, let us summarize what I've shown. When you define your connections, it can be helpful to set a caller code to remind you what instance you're in when you have a code editor open. I like to right-click and enable line numbers. I like to go into the preferences and set a font that's more pleasing to the eye. 
I also like to turn off open object on single click and I like to turn on grid and checkerboard you can use these arrows to toggle from spec to body or you can also click the package button up here to toggle the body and the spec and if you want to navigate to a database object that's referenced in your code you can take the control key and hover over that text until it hyperlinks and then click to open that object thanks for your time today um, happy coding and we'll see you soon